Right guys, welcome back to another episode of Bleep and Jeep. If you guys remember, I was working on this. We went out and went camping in the cold weather to see how the overland rat's nest worked. So if you guys remember my last video, you know that I said I was in Farmington, New Mexico. But I'm still doing a lot of back and forth between Custer, South Dakota and Farmington. Trying to move in the winter time is not ideal, along with uh, I have a lot of vehicles, so moving my junkyard, moving all my stuff, and getting there is just going to take a little time. So going forward, you're probably going to see a lot of South Dakota and New Mexico videos. Now, I have got to fix my sway problem. And with the amount of sway I'm getting in this thing, I have got to fix this and give it a better ride. So where we're going to go first is to the shocks. These are the shocks that I originally had on it when I put the lift kit on, and they are just a regular shock. The problem is with a normal shock that isn't charged, all it has is resistance. And that doesn't really give you any down pressure. I'm not a big fan of shocks like this. They're basically an air shock and they just have resistance both ways as you try to come up and down and your suspension flexes. So I tried to be affordable and I stepped up to this style of shock. This is a gas shock. Now this should be up like this, holding itself up. It should be, I should have to force it to close. The problem is, is that I can do whatever I want because it is blown out. It's absolutely no good. This thing should be going this way and putting pressure outward. That's going to help keep your body roll a lot more stable. When it comes to shocks, there's a bunch of companies out there, but I chose to go with Skyjacker. And the reason I chose Skyjacker is for one, they've been around for forever. They were part of putting Cherokees on the map. If you remember the Rock Ready Cherokee they built years and years and years ago, this thing was super cool. And the Rock Ready suspension was leaps and bounds above every other suspension of its time. So when I called them up and said, hey, I, need a, I got a six inch lift for a Cherokee, I need a good set of shocks, they already knew the length that I needed. I didn't even have to give them any measurements. I don't have to do anything weird, give them claps and extended, nothing like that, especially when I got a shock that's fighting me and I didn't have to pull it out to do it. I just gave them that I had a six inch lift, they sent me these. So this is gonna help with the ride quality and this is definitely gonna help with any body roll is just changing out shocks. All right, rear shocks were in, that was super easy. I wanna turn it around though and get the front. There's also something else I wanna do which will help with the ride. Alright, so what I have here is the original coil that was in this thing, which is a nice strong lift coil. It rides okay, but right here is Skyjacker's dual rate coil. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a much smoother ride and it's going to give me even better flex because it'll stretch out as it expands out and give me a better, better flex and better ride. And you can see here sitting on the ground that it's even about two inches taller than this coil, even though it's gonna set down to the exact same length. This is how a nitrogen charge shock is supposed to be. I can push down and it comes right back up. These are the way my front shocks are. They are doing just fine. The only thing is, is I don't really trust these cheaper shocks anymore, especially knowing that I'm gonna be carrying more weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the front shocks as well. So if you guys remember in this build, one of the things that always happens that I see with Cherokees, TJs, anything with a coil is, if you overextend it, the coil will pop out. If you break a shock, the coil will pop out. And that's why I use these spacers on the top and the bottom that the coil can't go through. Plus I have this plate that holds the coil down. So with that plate and the spacers, the coil can never come out no matter what I do to it. Got it. 
So with this thing at the same length, I'm at full droop, I still have the entire coil all the way down. Now look at the same ride height. You can see that gap there. Oh yeah, that's way stiffer. All right, shocks and coils are on. I'm gonna let this thing down. If you guys like this, the engine hoist, if you don't have a lift, is probably one of the easiest and safest ways that I've found to pick up the front end and get the suspension off. I um, mean, you can still put jack stands underneath, but when you got a really tall rig like this, uh, sometimes the jack stands aren't tall enough to get to the frame. So the shocks do come with this. If you wanna mount the reservoir to the shock body, then you can go ahead and mount it up. It just takes an Allen and you can tighten it down and it'll hold it up. That's probably what I'll do for the front. For the rear, I'm gonna go ahead and put straps on it and tie them up into the unibody on the frame rail there. So that's gonna make this thing ride a lot better. Now it's time to focus on some rear cabin room because we're gonna need some more room in the back end if I'm gonna be carrying all my camping equipment, cooking equipment, and everything else and turn this thing into an actual overlander. It started to snow. I just have these really light flurries coming down right now. But the next thing I wanna do is get this thing cleaned out. So let's be honest, if I run into another situation where this rooftop tent is just too wet and I had to dry it out and put it all back together and I put all my sleeping gear back in here, I need more room than this. So if you guys remember when I did this, this is a rough country fridge slider that I made a spare tire mount on. So I can get to the tire, pull it out, and then I can slide it back in and keep it in out of the way and keep my departure angle nice. For a rock crawler, this is a great setup. It worked really good. You lose some space in the back, but it's solid mounted. It isn't gonna go anywhere. And you kind of have a little table that you can use when you need to do stuff. But now that I'm probably gonna be cooking out of here, I need more space. Now I got all kinds of room for activities. Should have been Look at all this floor along. space. So Did much aerobics so in here. So many activities. So this is the bumper I built for Rat's Nest. It's a nice high clearance bumper. Cut the quarters out, pushed them up, welded them all back together. I'm gonna take this bumper off. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm gonna keep it for a future project maybe down the road, but I am gonna change it out with something a little better. When the mission is at hand, no act is off limits. This is the beginning of a Filthy Addictions off-road swing out tire carrier high clearance bumper. Now there's a couple things I did. I already put it in my Colt approved Duplicolor paint booth, painted it up, but I also went ahead and cut the sides off because it is set up for high clearance, but I want to do mine my own way, plus I stretched the rear end back so I have to change the length of it anyway. But if you had a stock opening, that's how it's set up for to come all the way out to the stock wheel well opening. They also have these really nice inserts here that bolt on and then tie into your unibody. So you weld it to your unibody and then you can bolt it here as well, which is gonna keep it really nice and stout at the slider, which I may still reuse that idea for mine. If you remember the issues I had with trying to step up on the back to get to things, 
I won't have that now with the swing out tire carrier open. I could step right on top of this. Plus this thing's nice and strong and stout and it still has the clevises so that I can hook onto things if I need to. And it actually still gives you a pretty decent departure angle even sticking out that far. Okay, so to be able to slide this in here, a couple things I had to do was open up the frame rail in the back. I also had to notch this section right here to clear the bolt for the shackle. And then one of the last things you probably might have to do is massage the openings up where these bolts go through in the frame rail so that they hold tight. You also have two holes here that you're gonna have to drill out that bolt into the base of the unibody as well. All right, well, it's still cold out, but the sky cleared up. At least it's not snowing anymore. And I have the bumper on. Now, like I said, I did have to drill some holes, massage some holes, make this thing fit. But the reason I chose using Filthy Addictions Off-Road as opposed to building my own is, number one, yeah, I could build my own, but then how much time is that going to take for me to custom build all my own rear bumper? Two, somebody already does it. And this guy's a small time dude. It's one guy building them at his house, putting them together and selling them. So the turnaround time is like the, when I bought mine was about a month out. Um, just FYI. So if you try to buy one, make sure you give yourself some time. And I had to get a hold of him through Facebook and then Messenger, Facebook Messenger. And then that's how I got this. But I really like how the bumper looks. Now I got to find what I did with all the hardware that it came with. So I need to go ahead and pack these bearings and then I can mount this seal. We have our packed bearing here. We can set that in. I like to put a little grease on there where the seal's gonna ride especially because that way it'll keep it from ever drying out and then letting fluid in. This might be something custom that you might not have. This is an inch and a half sock, or yeah, this is an inch and a half socket. So it's a pretty big darn socket. If you don't have one, that's what you're gonna need to put this on. Now I can go ahead and put my Summit machine cap on top. And we now have a nice heavy duty spindle bearing swing out tire carry. Now I still gotta put all the mounting brackets and everything over here and then i got to put my studs in there there you go that is stout as stout can be tire gone tire up Ooh, and some gooeys all right guys new day i ran out of daylight and this day is just a little bit nicer it is still cold though but now i need to go ahead and build my kickers as you can see i didn't lose a whole lot of departure angle got the tire up out of the way and I have plenty of area to put things if I want to add things to this but let's get to let's get to the kickers so the bumper is made out of inch and three quarter I am going to use inch and a half tubing that'll slide right into that DOM so the first thing I'm gonna do is just pick an angle to cut it out um, I'm gonna say 25 30 degrees and we will just cut this piece in half ish doesn't have to be perfect because I know that I'm gonna have to cut it down to the length I need anyway. So here are some fender washers. Now what I also want to do here while I have it off because I'm running a shorter length and I want to make the nice smooth bevel that it had originally, I need to cap these ends and to do it out here on the bench is gonna be a lot easier than trying to do it under the Jeep. I was able to make my own shorter extensions, slid them in, got them on, they're a little bit more clearance, and now I can go ahead and paint those, plus I can make little kickers on it later on down the road where I'll have somewhere to step right here on the side of this Jeep. So you can see the difference of how much longer those other ones are they'd been weighing here, and then I'd have had to cut it right here in the middle of this bracket so this wasn't going to work. One of the reasons why I like this trash bag over other brands is because this thing is porous, meaning if I pick up somebody's nasty 
beer cans or things like that and I throw it in here or anything filled with sand or anything else, that sand and that liquid will flush out. Plus I can take this thing to the pressure washer at the car wash, wash it off and it doesn't backsplash in my face, which nobody wants. So that's why I like these style trash bags over other brands that are out there. So in the last video, a lot of you guys said you gotta put a fridge in here. If you guys don't remember, I got a fridge in here. I've had this Rough Country fridge. It's been working good for a long time. One of the areas of space that doesn't get utilized is this window area. And that's where I went to Barnes. They have this fancy little Molly panel kit that is designed for a four-door Jeep, but will still fit a two-door. Now as for this back lower bracket, if you have a 96 or older, you're gonna have to drill a screw in here. Anything newer, they actually have a mount for it. I painted these with a Duplicolor engine green paint. And also don't forget that we have a code for Barnes, get 10% off. I'll put that link right there. Right here you can see where I'm gonna to have to modify my hole locations because a two door back C pillar is only about that thick. And that's why that mounts like that on a two door or on a four door, it mounts here. But on the two door, I'm gonna to have to mount it up just a little bit to fit this spot. Isn't a big deal. I'll just add a couple holes and we'll be good. Now I bet when I measure this hole to here, all these will probably be the same distance from here to here, here to here, and here to here to hold this thing up. And these are just held on by uh, little four millimeter Allen heads. Carrying, good for carrying some lightweight equipment. So the way I'm gonna make this work is I am just gonna put a bend in there going that way and it should fold in right behind it and then we should be good. So just a little bit of modification. I was able to get these molly panels in in a really short amount of time. And I think that is also gonna help with just extra storage in this Jeep. Now that I have both sides, I have stuff where I can hang more things. I'm gonna get some bags maybe, and then I can store stuff in those bags, but depending on what I wanna do, tools or parts or whatever, we'll see what I decide to put in there. Now you can't have an overlander without a shovel and an ax, right? I don't know why, but everybody feels you need to have an ax and a shovel kit. I'm not sure if this is what I'm going to use in the Cherokee. I do have this in the Cherokee. I've had it in there. It's got, this is a military setup and the shovel, pick, all kinds of stuff are in this bag that attach on the back of the axe handle. So you have a hammer, you have everything you can need in one tight bag. It is nice to carry around. It's nice to move around. It's not crazy heavy, but in the world of battery operated tools, you know, I could get a pretty decent little battery-powered DeWalt chainsaw or something and put on there and carry it and have a couple, you know, then I can carry an impact and a power inverter and a charger and other things. So what do you guys think I should do? Let me know down below for the next process of turning this thing into an overlander. All right, one of the things I showed you guys in the other video was the cam cans that I was going to put on here because... Just like some of you mentioned, water storage, fuel storage, things like that. Other than having to do a little bit of modification to make it fit my eight bolt pattern, my eight lug bolt pattern, I now have a locked cam can in here. I can tell you right now, this thing rides way better. It steers better, it doesn't body roll as bad. I can sit here and just crank on the wheel and I'm not getting like this major amount of body roll. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the shocks made a huge difference with that. The ride is softer. I think a lot of that comes to do with the, with the dual rate coils. This thing is just, getting better all the time. Hey 
Hey guys, I hope to see you guys in Sand Hollow for the off-road games. I guess this year we're not going to be driving our rigs. We're going to be spotting people through the trail with our rigs. So I'm going to do my best to keep them off their lid. Or I guess technically keep them off my lid because they're going to be driving one of our rigs. So I hope to see you guys there. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you. We are out here in Farmington with my buddy Rick. You guys What's know up, Rick guys? Jenkins? So uh, his daughter just dominated that. Now I'm on a struggle bus on it. But we got a pretty good group today. Yeah. We just ran Snoopy. I think we're going over to the waterfall trail. We got Jewel here driving. Hello, hello. 
If you ever watch her, she kicks butt in competition. All right, we just made it over to Waterfall Trail. It's one of my favorite trails out here for sure. It's an old trail. I don't know how long it's been here, but it's a, a long time. 90s. 90s, yeah. It looks like she's going for the hero line. Got a little light there for a second. I know. Good, good control though. Thanks. Good control. I was trying to fill it through. I was trying to see if it would like go over that lip or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's taking the sideline or the buggy line. Nobody took the original line. I want to show it to you guys. This is the original line to this trail when they first put it in. Harold off and some of the other guys came in here and did this. here the trail splits you kind of have the buggy section or you have the original trail both of which are not easy they're still wheeling but this one it's got a surprise for you around the corner what do you think about it I don't know. you don't know think your dad's gonna drive right up want some help you got it all right so if you guys remember this Jeep it was built originally by Harold Off. It has a 4.3 just like my S10 does, so it's pretty cool. Narrowed up scrambler aluminum tub. Ryder's gonna use this camera and he's gonna film. This is what waits for you around the corner right after you climb up that nasty boulder climb is this humongous crack which is obviously much larger than me and i did this years ago in my old toyota 4runner on leaf springs It didn't have the black marks it has now. I came back a few years ago with my rear steer samurai just for a day, quick day trip, but this is one heck of an obstacle right here. So the biggest thing about this trail is you don't have to have a buggy to do it. This trail was put in by a lot of local guys that just had CJs and 35 inch tall tires and, and wheeled it. Um, 
Obviously things get a little bigger over the years, but the main part of the trail, if you take the original trail and not the bonus stuff, it's a very doable trail for all rigs. That's what makes Farmington such an amazing place to wheel. This is a predecessor to Sand Hollow and it has a lot of awesome stuff here. Have you ever seen that? She just rear dig and it leveled out the rig and picked it up and got it up. Wave to me, I wave back. <laughs> I was finding power steering issues at this point in the day and I figured why not try a different line up here and see if I can make it. taken before. I've always straddled that V and I tried to go up the high side and it worked. That's nuts. Oh, drive shaft. Hey, you might want to try and sit still. Yeah, it let go. All right, so that was pretty rad. If you guys haven't been to Farmington, make sure you come check out Chokecherry Canyon. This place is epic. I've loved this place. I used to come here all the time. I can't wait to be doing more of this uh, down here in this area. So everybody's nice down here. There's awesome restaurants and the green chili is probably better down here. I promise you that. If you like this video, check these out. Thanks for watching. See you guys. What are you doing, Sully? What are you doing? Oh. Oh, are you going to carry that? Run with that. <laughs> My daughter's dog is insane. <laughs>